insulin like growth factor 1 or igf1 igf1 also called tomato medici is a polypeptide hormone which is very similar in structure to insulin most igf1 acts as an endocrine hormone primarily by liver so by endocrine it means that it is secreted directly into blood and the signaling occurs via the circulatory system it is also secreted by cartilaginous cells where it functions as a paracrine hormone so paracrine hormone means that the signaling acts on or nearby cell so it basically acts as an endocrine as well as paracrine hormone it binds to structurally related binding proteins and can regulate cellular dna synthesis it is also a potent inhibitor of cell apoptosis. It plays an important role in promoting tissue growth and crosses the blood-brain barrier. It also acts with estrogen to maintain brain homeostasis during aging, so females have a positive effect with regard to this. It acts on all body tissues to promote growth. It also plays an essential role in brain development, adult neural reorganization, and neural cell production. This is a growth hormone axis. So when we talk about the growth hormone axis, we usually just talk about growth hormone releasing hormone and growth hormone inhibiting hormone or somatostatin. But um, there are important components like growth hormone secretor GOX, uh, which acts synergistically and the growth hormone production is really due to an interplay between the growth hormone releasing hormone and growth hormone inhibiting hormone which causes the pulsatile release of growth hormone this is a diagram which shows that there is a parallelism with regard to the pathogenesis of parkinson's disease and insulin like growth factor 1 deficiency you can see that there is a decrease in mitochondrial function and increase in oxidative damage in both these cases. This is an interesting um, clinical trial that I came across. It is a case control cross-sectional uh, clinical trial. And the cases are patients who suffered from acute ischemic stroke within 24 hours. And the control group consists of patients who um, haven't had any stroke. The research showed that IGF-1 levels were significantly reduced in cases with stroke than controls. And it concludes that IGF-1 level reduction is an independent risk factor of stroke. So they even recommended routine screening of serum IGF-1 levels in patients with stroke risk factors, which is really huge. So as a whole, um, we understand that IGF-1 is essential for the normal development of CNS. But its relationship with neurodegenerative diseases, cerebrovascular diseases, and cognitive function in preclinical and human studies is conflicting. So further studies are necessary in all these fields. But in general, reduced IGF-1 levels are uh, shown to cause dysregulation of neurovascular system and IGF-1 have been shown to improve symptoms in neuropsychiatric disorders, while it is kind of conflicting in neurodegenerative diseases, as we said uh, in above. Um, reduced IGF-1 signaling may have a protective role in slowing disease progression in Alzheimer's disease, which is hopeful. And we can see that it play an opposing role on aging brain, depending on various factors. So further, uh, clinical trials are necessary in this field as well. These are my references. Um, thank you.